The next morning, I had the honor to interview Philip and Cassandra Moore. They're the ones that had the scary encounter with the Bigfoot that charged at them. Here is his story. And as I looked over the crest, there's something looking back at me, holding an armful of brush. And it turned to look at me. I knew it wasn't, it was creepy. It just, it, the way it looked at me, it scared me after bloody death, to be honest with you. And I turned and started running back towards the waterfall and I shouted at my wife, go, move, and she says, why? And then she saw it. So then she, we started climbing the waterfall. And by the time we got back here, we were covered in cuts. Our legs were bleeding. And that's basically the story. And we've believed in it ever since because what was coming for us was pretty big. And it, it wasn't a gorilla. <laughs> you mentioned you, you found what was, looked like a, a bed. Yeah, there's, um, there was some straw, dead leaves or something from what I remember. And it looked like something to be sleeping there. And I knew this because I did a lot of uh, survival stuff. My uncle was a survivalist in England. And uh, his name was Tracker Eddie McGee. And uh, he used to do a lot of tracking. And he was, he was known as one of the world's leading survivalists. So I had a little bit of training with him when I was younger. And uh, I knew when I came across a bed or something like that, you know, I recognized it. And that and, was uh, in the cave? Like it, was in the, it was in the opening to the cave. Yeah. But then we saw the footprint, which was a, there was a muddy bed coming down from the from the waterfall, and the print was in the mud, and it was it was pretty clear, and it was about it was about this big. It was it was very big. It was bigger than what I'd ever seen on the TV programs or anything. Did you photo, photo there? Pardon? Did you photo there? Take a photo? No, I didn't. I didn't have my camera with me that day. Okay. How but, far was that? Uh, we did come back to here though, and. Uh, because I mentioned it to Linda's husband when we came, we met him coming back down the trail where we was running up and we was out of breath and our legs were bleeding and I says, we've seen something down there. And I don't think he believed us, so I thought, I better shut up, he's gonna think we're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> he still does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was it, we, we did come back. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like saying this, I came back with a Henry rifle and a night sight because I thought we were gonna go, I, want, I wanted to see it again but I wanted some protection from, with, for my wife. So I did come back no, with no intention to shoot the damn thing, but basically, yeah. Uh, so when you saw it, what did it do? It came after me. It did? Yeah. yeah. Did it point, get you? So like uh, a block charge. At one point I thought, I better overtake my wife and then she'll be behind me, it'll get her first. <laughs> <laughs> how, how close did it get to you? Um, I'd say about 40 feet. 40 feet? Yeah. And then we turned, I turned around halfway up the waterfall and we couldn't see it. And I didn't know if it was trying to come up somewhere else to get us. So we kept, we, we was pretty nervous. If it's not raining tomorrow, we can take you down and show you like weather. Like yeah. Everything yeah, we can show you it. I planned on it anyway. <laughs> did, you, did you happen to go into the cave? I mean, well, you can't the, go the under, right into them. You know what I mean? They're like into the, the it's an over, not overhang. deep caves. Yeah. For the ones that we saw anyway. But what we, the, earlier that day we had seen a bear and uh, it, was a, it looked like a female bear and uh, we thought, we, we heard noise and that was why I went up the escarpment, the, the little place where it went and looked over. And you couldn't get out of that valley and the second time I went I didn't see anything. We climbed, I climbed up and up through the trees but it's quite a climb, it's, it's pretty dangerous if you fall, you've got a long way down. But. Uh, the second time we went back, we went to see if we could find it, but um, there's nothing else I can really say about it because we came back, we didn't see it the second time. What there was nothing there, but we th we'd seen a bear earlier the day, the first time we saw it. And we thought it was a bear because I, c I said to my wife, I says, I'm gonna go look, can you hear that? We were listening, it was really quiet down there. And we could hear these cracking of branches. I says, bear, I says, just beware, I says, you know. And I crawled up to see what it was to look over and it was, it was big. It, it was showed. Like a, it was it, like a medium brown color. Yeah. yeah Ready. Medium yeah. brown. Yeah. It had bright red hair, and its shoulders was about this. It must have been. So after the first time that this happened to you, you decided to go back a second time. Yep. And you weren't scared like the second time. Uh, weren't you nervous? No. Uh, Are you were? I, wasn't. To bed, I, to go I used to fly aircraft into Somalia. That didn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> 
but uh, you know, I just want to, I wanted proof of it. We did take a camera the second time, but we couldn't find it. <coughs> well, that's that's the reason why you didn't see it. And I think with these things, I, I think they move around. You know, I don't think they stay in one place. Yeah. To be honest with you, that's why nobody can ever see them. It knew you had a camera, so maybe. <laughs> How long did it chase you for? Um, God, that's hard to say because we were running. I would say seven minutes because I think it. Looking back now, I think it tried to scare us. I don't think it meant us any harm because it would have caught us. I really believe from what I, from the programs I've watched with you on and how I perceived these things, I think if it wanted to catch us, it could have done. So it felt like it was moving fast. Mm -hmm. How tall was it? Approximately. To be honest with you, I, could, I don't know. I think it was about, it looked like eight or nine feet. It was big. We were up here were. and it was Pardon? low down, so like it's hard work. <laughs> Pardon? So where we were was up here where those caves and inventions go, and then it was like right over that ridge you see down. Yeah. And that's she saw it coming over the top of the ridge because I had my back to it. I was running. <laughs> and I screamed at my wife. I says, get up. I says, climb now. And then she, you know, she she wanted to see what it was first, and she saw it. I did remember once that was enough for me. Yeah, I was good. And we've kept quiet about this. There's only Linda and her husband who's known about it. We've not talked to anybody else about it. We really appreciate you sharing this. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So I was still looking at like we were kind of going back and forth about like the bedding. And where were those? Because I mean, again, big skeptic. So we had seen a bear earlier, and I'm like, that could easily be a bear getting in here. And he's like, well, I don't know how bear. And I said, you know, bears can climb up here and everything else. And that's what he turned around first, and he saw it. And and he says that thing's on two legs. And I turned around and I saw it. He goes, he's he's running. And I was like, that that's all he had to say to me. I was I was gone. That that was it. So I went, he wanted to come back the second time. So we have somebody who's worked with us for like 10 years. And I talked him into coming with, because I knew, like, me going out there with them, because we didn't get here till night, and so he decides they've got big, like, military flashlights going out. And they're like, come on, I'm like, I'm not walking around. There. We did get stro stones thrown at us, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, so we well, went, I'm like, fine. He gets me to do all sorts of stuff, I don't want to do this. So I get out there, and they're ahead of me, which is fine. I've got the flashlights and stuff. And we got down, and then we were pretty far back. We're on the walking trail now. We didn't go down the waterfall at night to go back. So we were on the walking trail just seeing, and they'd taken sticks and they were hitting trees and all sorts, you know, the second time coming back. And then something started throwing something, stones. There was like stones coming, and I, I again, I'm like, I'm leaving. I'm like, oh no, no, let's go for it. I'm like, I'm leaving, we're, we're going now. So yeah, it, I don't think- Where, 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 where were the stones coming from? Down in the valley? Well, so the trail goes through, and you've got forest on this side, and you've got a little bit of forest on this side, and that's where it goes down to that ravine right. over there on the left-hand side. And they were coming from, the, like, we're walking, how do you put it? The waterfalls at my back were walking that way. It was coming from the right-hand side from what it was dark again. But there were things being thrown, and I was not okay with it. So I don't know what was throwing us, but I didn't really want to be there to find out, so. Did you pick up any sounds or? Smells. Oh, sorry, I know panicky moment, but do you recall anything like that? I mean, the closest I could say to smells was there was like feces that were actually in there in that area, the indentation under there, like by the bedding, because I could notice that. And when we went around the corner to where we saw it, there was another indentation, no bedding, but more feces around there too. So again, I, I couldn't, I'm not a scientist, so I couldn't tell you like what kind of feces the creatures they belong to. So when you caught the glimpse of it, coming your way, did you see a face at all, the face of it? Well, he told me run. it's right, yeah, and I, when I turned around, I just seen something standing up, and again, we're up here, this thing is down there, and it was on two legs, that's all, it was on two legs, and it was not a bear, so, but I wasn't going to stick around and find out sure. really what it was, because it was bigger than I was. Mm -hmm. We've not spoke about it since. The only person I've told about it, other than Linda and her husband, is Garth Brooks's manager, who's my neighbour. And he fell on my settee laughing. He fell, and I said, that's it, I'm not telling anybody else. <laughs> well, we really appreciate you coming all the way from Nashville, is it? Yeah. yeah. And sharing your story. We really appreciate you. Thank you. And if you ever find bedding and, and feces, please call me. <laughs> okay. I mean, because that's what you do. Assuming you think it's Bigfoot, not like this in general. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, thank you so much, really, you guys, uh, for, for sharing that with us.
What I really like about this Bigfoot encounter is the fact that there were two eyewitnesses. I am eager to share with you our expedition to the exact spot where they had this terrifying encounter. But before I share this with you, let's get back to Maria and Russell's event. <laughs> 